evaluating a fat pad. Okay. <clears throat> what is the purpose of evaluating a fat pad? <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and talk about some cer certain types of conditions and pathologies regarding the bone. Bursitis, bursitis, I kept the definitions here very, very basic. In your book, it's going to be a little bit more specific. All right, so I need you guys to refer to your book with the list of the different pathologies and fractures that are listed there in the text. So bursitis is basically inflammation of the bursa. What's a bursa? Okay. Where, where do we find bursas? In the knee? Yeah, so we're talking about synovial joint areas, like the knee, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. Anything where there's a synovial joint. So this is just basically an inflammation of the bursa. <clears throat> what we show here is just a change in the density of the bone. Bone should be wide, but there are some changes here in density here on the uh, lateral aspect of the tibia. But bursitis you wouldn't really see under x-ray. You would see it more in what? Because it's soft tissue, where would you see it? What kind of study? MRI. MRI, okay. All right, here we have carpal tunnel syndrome or carpal tunnels, <laughs> what they call it. So those who experience carpal tunnel are those who are on the computer a lot, right? A lot of writing, a lot of computer, a lot of video games, okay? Um, so what happens here is you've got this major uh, nerve that's going down the palm of your wrist all the way to the radial <coughs> palma area. So you've got this main nerve here called the median nerve. And with this constant wear and tear, it causes this tendon going across the palm to compress on that nerve. And what do carpal, those with carpal tunnel, what do they complain of? Pain or what else? Tingling or numbness of their fingers, okay? Because there's an impingement on that particular nerve. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there is any type of skeletal damage to that area. It could be just an impingement of that particular nerve caused by the tendons, all that wear and tear, okay? Would you see something like that under x-ray? No. You know what this is? This is an MRI, so we would better visualize it under an MRI, okay? Those are all your different nerves of your wrist. <clears throat> all right, fracture. Uh, when, we, when we write things about fracture, we use the abbreviation FX a lot, so FX stands for fracture. A fracture is a break in the structural bone caused by force. It's classified in several ways. It can be classified by the extent of the fracture. It can be classified by the direction of the fracture lines, by the alignment of bony fragments, and by the integrity of overlying tissue. Here we have what's known as a Barton's fracture. A Barton's fracture is an intra-articular fracture of the distal radius with dislocation of the radiocarpal joint. So what it's saying here is it's an intra-articular uh, fracture, so it does involve the joint itself, so there's a break in the joint space. And it says here with a dislocation of the radiocarpal joint, so there's also going to be dislocation of the radial and carpal joint. Is a part of this fracture. <clears throat> Here we have the Bennett's fracture. It's a fracture of the base of the first metacarpal bone. Another name for Bennett's is also a skier's fracture. Why? Okay, the skiers with what? The poles. With this pole and straps around their thumbs, right? So when they lose their pole, it pulls on the thumb causing this particular break. So you can see the break is very linear this way, but there's two areas. There's a break there and there's also a break there. So it's actually just one break that goes, it was at the base and it broke and all, it caused a displacement <coughs> going distally. Looks painful. Boxer's fracture. The fracture of the metacarpal neck of the fifth, the fifth is most common. You can have boxer fractures in any part of the distal metacarpal, but it's most common on the fifth. Why did they call it boxer's fracture? Because they punch? Yeah, when you punch, you, yeah, when you're punching, you're not punching straight on, you're kind of punching at an angle, and it's the fifth area that becomes, that receives injury. Well, what are all these other parts? Are all these also fractures?
you call it? Just a plate. What plate? That's the, that's the growth area, right? So are we talking about, do you think this patient's older or younger? Younger. It's going to be younger. This is a hand of a child. So this is some kid who threw a tantrum. Punched a wall. Punched punch his, I don't know, punched his mom. <laughs> Cold fracture, a coles fracture. It's a fracture of the distal radius displaced posteriorly. Posteriorly, okay? This is based on what? The anatomical position. The anatomical position. So this is a fracture that is displaced towards the back in the anatomical position. Okay? Use your coles. There's also one if it's displaced anteriorly. This is the Smith's fracture. Fracture of distal radius displaced anteriorly. Okay. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Have I had it? No. Oh, I've been lucky. I've never broken a bone in my life. I've had knee surgery, but that was from doing something stupid. <laughs> I displace, I, I hyperextended my leg. So you know how your, your knee locks? Well, my knee unlocked, so my, lead, my knee went the other way. <coughs> so instead of it bending in normal direction, it went this way, and it, I was basically kissing my foot. <laughs> so my patella, it snapped back, and my patella went from the front all the way to the back. So I tore my ACL. So what was the dumb thing that you did? That's another Not going to go into that. <laughs> When we're out for drinks, I'm drunk, then I'll tell you. <laughs> but you don't drink. Remember the acronym? Exactly. So we'll never know. cannot <laughs> All right. So here is a displaced fracture. Uh, open or compound fracture just means that the broken end of the fragments are piercing or protruding through the, the skin. skin. Okay. Open fracture. Okay, comminuted fracture is bone is broken, splintered, or crushed into different pieces. Uh, what are we looking at here? Is this the radial? Is this the foot or the, the arm? Leg, arm. Yeah. So we, we know it's what, because just by looking at these. It's the wrist, right? It's the wrist, yeah. So this is the, the wrist. So this is a broken, you said, what was it? Radius. Radius. It fooled me because this picture is upside down. I should flip it the other way. You could think it's the ankle. <laughs> it's a fun game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so pro proper orientation of the hands should be fingers pointing upwards. So the fingers are here. This should, this should be rotated so it's pointing upwards. <clears throat> okay, spiral or torsion fracture is where the bone is twisted apart. Which bone is this? Is that a femur? femur? This is the femur, right? So here we have the femur. Yeah, and that's bad. The patella. I can kill someone. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, you, this is a very hard fracture yeah. to obtain. Oh, yeah. So we're yeah. talking about somebody who receives some major trauma. You can bleed out from that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can't bleed from this. The femur is the, one of the hardest bones in your body, okay? Other than the male skull. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard to break, guys. The other hard bone to break is the scapula, the, the scapular plate. That's very hard to break, too. But I've, I had one patient who had a scapular break, and it was because um, he came home, long story short, he came home drunk. His wife got pissed off, got a bat, and smacked him across the back. Wow. Yeah, and he broke his scapula. That'll break your scapula. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You can't, those are bones that you can't break, that are normally hard and difficult to break. <laughs> when, you work, when you guys work the evening shift, you get some interesting things <laughs> coming through. I've had some crazy stories. Some crazy, crazy stories, crazy examinations. All right, green stick fracture, okay? Green stick referring to what? Young kid. It's like a branch, right? So with a, uh, a, a branch from a young tree, it's very pliable. Okay, you can bend it. Okay, uh, this applies to younger patients. They don't have; they're still their bones are still growing, not a lot of calcium. So you, it'll bend and it'll only break the exterior or the ostium of the bone, 
so it's incomplete. So another word for this is also an incomplete fracture. The green stick is also known as an incomplete fracture. Okay, now when we look at this, is this a break here? No. It's not. We just said you have us young patients, right? So this is another plate. Uh, <laughs> Again, is the picture right up or is it upside down? Yeah. It's upside down. What bone is broken here? Radius. Again, the radius. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's an artifact or maybe some kind of condition because it looks like it goes all the way across. So I don't know what's going on there. It might be just some kind of defect on that the image. <coughs> okay, dislocation. Separation of two bones from their joints. That looks like fun. What is that? It's an elbow. elbow. It's, an elbow. Oh. Yeah. it's a dislocation of the elbow. Now, how would you how would you put the joint back together? Pull. Yeah, you just yank it. Down. Yeah, you can yank it down. Okay. Um, this is the type that you can. It's called the close reduction. Close reduction is you don't have to go in and operate. So you do it while everything is still intact and you're just pulling and tugging on the arm. They do that with elderly patients who may have dislocated their hips and their shoulders and sometimes I literally walk into the ER and you have the doctor standing on the bed <laughs> like this on the patient's leg trying to pop the hip back in place. Okay, joint effusion either synovial or hemorrhagic is accumulated fluid in the joint cavity secondary to, okay, as a result of fractures, dislocations, <coughs> and soft tissue damage or inflammation is the definition of joint effusion. Osteoarthritis is degenerative joint disease. Osteoarthritis is degenerative bone disease. So generally, with someone who has osteoarthritis, you will see some also degenerative changes in the uh, bone and joint areas. Can you get that young, or is it already old? No, you can get it young. Yeah, it can be it can be genetics, it can be hereditary, or it can be a process of old age. Is there a cure? Is there a cure? No. So don't be fooled about all those joint pills that you can take. Mm. Those are those are basically it's not the <laughs> children. Um, it's, it's basically, um, what do you call it? Um, like placebo? Placebo. Yeah, placebo. It's placebo in nature, so it really doesn't, there isn't really any cure for any type of uh, joint disease. Because <coughs> if you look at the bottles and listen to the commercials, it will say it may, it may promote good uh, joint health. It's always may. <coughs> All right, osteomyelitis is the infection of the bone. Now this is something that you can just get automatically. It's usually secondary to some kind of injury to the bone or some kind of surgery. So if someone had a surgery in their hand and uh, the surgical area got contaminated, okay, they can get an infection of the bone. Okay. And you'll notice there's, there's some uh, changes in the of the bone. So that, that, that whiteness around the bone, that's the, inf the inflammation, right? Like Yeah, well, see bonus right here. So now you've got extra bony buildup over here. So two instances, you have extra bony buildup over here caused by infection. And here you're, there is going to be some loss of bone. So it can go either way. Is it always secondary to? It's generally related to some sort of wound or surgery. Mm -hmm. but not always. Not always. Okay, here's another example of osteomyelitis. Okay, here we have, again, if you look at regular bone here, now we've got some roughness to the exterior of the bone. Also here, there's some changes going on here that in involves some of the joints and the, the, what do you call it, the tendons and ligaments in this particular area because those are becoming calcified as well. Is that what those little hook things are on the sides? Yes, right here. Yeah. Those are your ligaments. Yeah, this, is, this is the uh, this this is the ligament. Okay, you got lateral uh, lateral ligaments here, and then they're becoming calcified. Their leg also looks thicker. Mm -hmm. It's it thicker, so it's, it doesn't have the same smooth appearance of that. You're also noticing that there's some 
they're losing some smoothness, there's some thickness, and also increased density of the bone, which just means that it's getting more white. The more white it is, the more dense the bone is. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Okay, if they have, I mean, there's there's bone pathology in G here, but I don't know what it's related to. <coughs> Paget's disease. If this is Paget's disease, there's nothing you can do about it. You can have disease that's benign. You can have those that are malignant. Bony disease that is benign means that you know you're going to have the sexual growth. There may be some changes in the way you walk, but it's not going to kill you. Okay, whereas malignant can kill you. So again, I don't know. I don't know the history on this particular X-ray because some of the appearances may look the same. This is why you, when you as a technologist, should have good, good, get good history from your patients, and also look through the chart, flip through there to see what kind of history they've had, so you can relay that information to the doctor as they're reading out the image. <laughs> Again, it's either benign or malignant. If it's benign, the public's going to leave it alone and they probably can control it. Okay. They may eliminate it, they may not. So again, it all depends on what the origin and the type of pathology that they are, uh, condition that they're dealing with here. Now, if we look back at this x-ray here, again, do we see anything unusual about this x-ray? I mean, it's not unusual, but can you tell the age of this patient? Is it an older patient or a younger patient? Older. It's a younger patient again, right? Oh, is it? We've got the growth plates up there. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, see, so look over here at the pelvis. It hasn't fully developed yet. So that can calcify that early? I mean, that fast? Yeah, again, it can happen at any age. So again, I don't know the background of this particular x-ray. So this can, this can be something that's aggressive or not. Just wondering, is the pelvis a female? I'm going to say yes. It's a female. Because of the ankle? No, I'm looking at the soft tissue. Oh, soft tissue. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, yeah. At this point, you can't. You know, I'm talking about soft tissue, right? Yeah. yeah I'm looking at the creases over here. Um, you, you, can't, you can't tell. It's harder to tell the, the sex of the patient when they're this young. As the pelvis begins to develop, now the different angles and the shape of the pelvis, you can tell if they're male or female. But at this young age, they're still developing, so it's harder to tell. Is there any, like, the dense bones up in the pulp? Is there any Up here? Yeah. There might be something going on there. Okay. Osteopetrosis. Abnormally dense in brittle bone. Every time we see osteopetrosis, I think of Harry Potter. <laughs> osteopetrosis! <laughs> Abnormally dense in brittle bone. So there's an overproduction of bone. Is it's almost that like, good? Almost like glass, right? Like, yeah, is that good or bad? You yeah. said almost like glass. It's bad. Yeah. Okay, brittle bone. So, I mean, you can just bump a bone and you can break it. It's like bone china. Okay? So it's marble bone or uh, stone bone, and you can uh, you see it. You have this overproduction because it's solidly white. Okay, it's very white. So what's the opposite of osteopetrosis? Osteoporosis. What's the opposite? Osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Okay, so osteoporosis is low bone density. Again, bone should be white. White. Do we see any bone density here? Not really. It's very gray. So there's a lot of bony st uh, structure here, and you can also tell that the, the vertebral body should be nice and rectangular-like, but you can see compressions okay, of the bone. Those are compression fractures caused by the decreased density of the bone, and all that weight they're trying to support causes the bone to collapse and compress. There's patch disease that we're talking about. It's destructive bone disease with overproduction of dense yet soft bone. Okay. Usually it happens with, uh, with men at a certain age. <clears throat> it's a Paget's disease. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune disorder. So this is where your body attacks its own, uh, where your body attacks its own body. 
so to speak, okay? It's chronic, it's inflammatory, and affects the connective tissue of the, the joints. It is, uh, it is so debilitating, it also causes changes in the true uh, anatomy of the particular structures. There's all that tugging and pulling and causes the deformity, deformity of the uh, extremities. Skier's thumb, okay. Sprain or tear of ligament near first metacarpal. Again, this is related to the Bennett's fracture that we talked about earlier. Tumors, bone tumors, uh, new ones are called neoplasms. They can be benign, which is non-cancerous, or malignant, which are cancerous. When you're talking about uh, things that are soft in nature, they may either have a CT or an MRI to determine the size, type, and location of that particular tumor. Here we have multiple myeloma. Highly malignant, most common type of bony cancer and appears as punched out holes in the structure. So this is a cancer that has spread throughout the entire body. Highly aggressive. Uh, this is a nuclear medicine scan of a multiple myeloma. Do you guys know what nuclear medicine is, by the way? <clears throat> nuclear medicine is a discipline in radiology where the patient is injected with radioactive pharmaceuticals. So radioactive pharmaceuticals. So now the patient becomes the source, the source of x-rays. Okay, so this is nuclear medicine. So the, uh, the patient here is emitting emitting radiation, and so it doesn't look like a normal x-ray. When you look at it, it looks very pixelated. It's like standing in front of your computer screen and all you see is a bunch of, bunch of dots, right? But the moment that you step about three or four feet away, it looks like a picture. That's what nuclear medicine is, it's a bunch of the dots. That is the radiation that's being detected from the patient, and then the doctors can make an interpretation of what these extra densities mean. Well, this is, yeah, this is a cancerous process going on here. This is one here, this one here, this one here. Um, it's, it's spread. Because when you're looking at the shoulder and scapula over here, it's nice and white, but over here it's dark. So you, you do a uh, comparison of the other side of the body. There's nothing here, but there's something here. Nothing here, but there's something here. So these are all cancerous processes. So when cancer is spreading, what is that called? Metastasis. Metastasis. So this is a cancer that's metastasized. <clears throat> Osteosarcoma, also malignant, is the most. It's the second most common type of bone cancer. Uh, it occurs with rapid growth in adolescence. Here, there is a uh, with oste uh, osteosarcoma. There is a active proliferation of the osteoblast. So again, it's an overproduction uh, of the bone. <coughs> you can't control it. Chondrosarcoma is a malignant tumor of the cartilage. <coughs> and chondroma is a benign, benign is that good or bad? It's good. good, okay, so it's non cancerous. It's Better. benign growth of uh, the cartilage uh, affecting the small bones. So again, you have changes of densities over here. So this is the area that is affected. Now, can you tell if it's benign or malignant by looking at it? No. So what do they need to do in addition to taking x-rays? Mm -hmm. They need to do a bone biopsy. Okay. So the x-ray will indicate there's some kind of process going on there, but they need to be a little bit more specific by doing labs, bone biopsy. tests, biopsies. They actually have to go in there and take a piece of the bone. <clears throat> okay, osteochondromas is also benign, also known as ex exostosis, exostosis. Okay, and then you have different types of uh, alternate imaging modalities uh, to examine the bone. You can either do art programs. What's an art program? X-ray of the joints. Okay, it's a study of the joints. So we're going. So which joints are we talking about here? It's specific. 
is specific to those that have a synovial sac, okay, as your shoulders, your hips, your knees. That's the most common place for orthograms. And then we can also do CT, MRI, and nuclear medicine. So as I said in the past, you know, the question is, well, why do we have so many modalities? Well, if there was one modality that can give us all the pictures that we needed, then we wouldn't need the other ones. But other modalities exist because each of them have different strengths that the other one doesn't. So you have CT and MRI, good for bone, good for soft tissue, and then nuclear medicine is good for uh, any type of, um, it's a dynamic study. So it, it studies the metabolism of the body. So this is good for um, evaluating a disease process. Isn't that what it is where areas where there's tumors, it's, it's high, they have high metabolism, right? Right. So the, the, the concept is when you, when you have, um, when you're injecting the body with radiopharmaceuticals, it should distribute evenly. And so just like any other chemicals, like when you take your medication, it should distribute uh, evenly, but it goes, it's concentrated in areas where there is a uh, pathologic process. So like in cancer, now you're going to have a concentration of all of the radiopharmaceuticals attaching to those particular cells and then it's more radiation in that area <coughs> than in others. Can they use that? Can they use that? They, they, chemo. They have chemo to do that. But doesn't chemo get everything? It yeah. doesn't do everything. So radiopharmaceuticals, they kind of go throughout the body, so you can't control where they go. Okay. So here's an arthrogram of the shoulder. You will, guys, you will be participating in these type of procedures. <clears throat> it's a sterile technique, so you're gonna prep the site with betadine and drape it with some kind of towel or sterile sheet. And the doctor will go in there with a long <coughs> spinal needle, okay, like so, <coughs> stick it in the joint space with the use of fluoroscopy. You're gonna pull out any uh, synovial fluid in the sac and replace it with contrast. Now, why would they remove the fluid and then inject contrast? Why don't they just leave the fluid in there? Can you get effusion or? Because it's, you, you need to make room for the contrast. If you injected the contrast in there without removing some fluids out, it's gonna hurt. Okay, so we're trying to maintain the volume within that sac. So the doctor then will take pictures in different directions. You're there to assist them during this procedure. <clears throat> All right. You guys can look through this on your own. All right. Uh, what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys go on break. We'll come back in about.